One year ago, I bought this bike and I posted a video saying this is why I think the Indian Roadmaster Dark Horse is the ultimate American V-twin touring motorcycle. Over the course of the last year, I've gotten to ride this bike for 10,600 odd miles. I've done a bunch of mods to it, been on adventures with this motorcycle, uh, put lots of miles on it. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about the one year ownership review talk to you about the cost of ownership, the mods, the cost of mods, the things I love and things I don't like about this bike, and a lot of fun stuff. So don't go anywhere. It's me, it's your boy bro, and I am your bro man. So since last year, I've been riding this bike everywhere. I've done a couple of iron butt challenges, the Saddle Sore 1000 and the Bun Burner 1500, which is 1000 miles in 24 hours or less and 1500 miles in 36 hours or less. I've used it to run my errands, to go grocery shopping, to go to work, to go for filming, all of it. <laughs> Let's give a quick rundown on this bike. This is the Indian Roadmaster Dark Horse. The Roadmaster is Indian's full dress touring motorcycle. In, in 2020, you had the base Roadmaster, the Roadmaster Limited, the Roadmaster Dark Horse, and the Roadmaster Elite. What's the difference between the Dark Horse and the others? Well, you have a lot of blacked out parks since it's a Dark Horse. And you have some specific colors, the white being one of them. As for the other specs on this bike, it has a 65 inch wheelbase, weighs about 930 pounds. It's powered by a 116 cubic inch V-twin that's air-cooled, puts out about 126 foot-pound of torque. And the 116 cubic inch, if you convert that to cc's or cubic centimeters that's 1901 that's a little easter egg there indian motorcycle was founded in 1901 so that's their way of paying homage to the original indian motorcycles it has about 36 gallons of storage space between the saddlebags the tool pack and those little cubby hole, cubby holes here on the fairing so let's talk about the maintenance cost I had to do the 500 mile service, the 5,000 mile service, and the 10,000 mile service. 500 miles was 500 bucks, 5,000 miles was 360 bucks, and 10,000 miles was about 450 bucks, so a total of $1,310. The cost of ownership for me has been 1310 divided by 365 days or one year that's about three dollars 60 cents a day <laughs> now let's talk about the mods that i've done on this bike uh the first three that i have done is are, are things i really hope that this bike came standard with i don't know why it didn't the first thing i got were the driving lights you gotta have the driving light so those come as the lights and the mount that's a 400 dollar part that's before taxes and all of that four hundred dollars for that the second thing i got were the crash bars for the rear crash bars these are the crash bars that protect your saddlebags those were 310 for the pair one on each side and then the third thing i had to get was the garage door opener module now the ride command center has the garage door opener uh, buttons in there but you need to add a module to activate it that's about a 175 dollar part like i didn't like the sound of the stock bike so of course, I wanted loud pipes. So when I was doing my research, I spoke to a couple of folks and they said like, if you're getting your pipes, also get the stage one. Air intake also comes with uh, up maps and it maps your fuel engagement and all of that. You get not just the sound, but also some more kick out of the bike. The stage one air intake is about a $540 part and the pipes, I, I got the, I didn't get the Indian pipes. I went with a company called Tab Performance and they make these pipes called the BAM sticks with zombie baffles. Oh my God, this sound loud and this sound awesome. For, I'm gonna put the links to all of these products in the video description below. Go check them out if you want them. I'm not affiliated with them. I've used them and I love them. And then that wasn't enough. I wanted some more power out of it, because why not? So I went ahead with the stage two kit. With the stage two kit, you get bigger cams, bigger throttle body, and larger fuel injectors. The part for that is $840. Uh, stage two kit required a seven hour labor and the stage one was a four hour labor, so 11 hours of labor that, that you gotta factor in those costs too into it as well. So I was riding through the Smoky Mountains uh, doing my thing, minding my own business and I had the navigation on and it just flickered and went out um, in the middle of nowhere. I pulled over to the side of the road, I was like WTF, turned the bike off and turned it on after a few minutes 
and it came right back up. I've never been able to replicate that issue again. I've spoken to the uh, to the dealerships and the technicians. Um, they have no idea either. If any of you have faced the same problem and if you know the cure, let me know. It's only happened to me once, but if it comes if it happens again i'll know what to fix the second issue this bike vibrates a lot it's a big engine of course it does it's a big v-twin the one problem i had with that issue i had with that was these seats they are held by three screws there are two on each side and one underneath the tool pack the, the one under the tool pack that flew off somewhere i don't know where but i was told that yeah this bike vibrates a lot so it probably flew off and the third issue i've had is up on top here you have a little storage compartment and there you have your usb outlet you can plug in your usb stick if you want to listen to music or something the problem with that is it's a really finicky connection there like in the middle of a song or in the middle of the road it'll keep it'll say that hey usb device not found blah, blah, blah. so i stopped using that usb device altogether uh, you got bluetooth and you have a bunch of other other options streaming options as well so now I've used that connection to download upgrades for the right command center and all of that, upload maps or navigation and things like that. If that's worked fine if it's in the garage and all of that, it's not moving. But it's when, when it's moving, it, it gets a little finicky, I don't know why. And now let's move on to things that I don't like about the bike. Well, the first things first, it's not probably not a bike problem, it's probably a me problem, uh, is the color. It's, it's the white smoke, I, in my opinion, it looks gorgeous, it looks beautiful, elegant, all of that. But the problem is we live, I live in North Carolina and this is like home to a species of 100,000 bugs or whatever. So every time I'm out for a ride, you come back in and this bug splattered all over bug guts, bug splattered all over the bike. It's really, really, really hard to keep it clean. Second thing I don't like about this bike is something that folks have asked me in my first video. How hot does this bike get? Well, this is a big air-cooled engine, guys, and it does get hot. On colder days, on cool days, it feels awesome because you want the heat. On hotter days, especially when you're in slow traffic, stop and go traffic, or just stuck in traffic, it is hot. It, it gets really, really hot. Now, it's not unbearable hot, but it's quite hot. If you open the vents on both sides, it helps with the ventilation. And as long as you're moving, you're good. It's only when you're stopped somewhere, stopped at a red light or stuck in traffic, that's when you, you, you really, really, really start to feel the heat. The third thing I don't like about this bike is the lack of the aftermarket. Now, for other motorcycles, Harleys and stuff, there's a huge aftermarket space where you have thousands of vendors with thousands of stuff. Not so much for Indian. It's catching up but it's not quite as diverse and elaborate as it is for some of the other manufacturers. The last thing that I don't like about the Indian Roadmaster that I own is, it really doesn't want you to do short trips or short rides. <laughs> Once you start riding this bike, let me do a few more miles. Let me hit 100, let me hit 200 miles. Let me just keep riding. That's an issue, that's an issue. <laughs> I want to, now let's move on to the things that I love about this bike. First thing that I love is this cockpit with this infotainment screen, the right command center. Look at it, look at that graphic. I think that's the coolest graphic I've seen in a, on a motorcycle. And there's more than the graphic, you got speakers, you have this nice view through the windshield. I don't know, it just looks like a commanding presence right there. You have the ability to split screens. And uh, these screens are all touch screens, of course, and you can toggle through them and customize them. So let's say you wanted something there. Nope, not you, BGs. Let's go down. There's the tire pressure. Yes, sir. That's what I want up there. Drag and drop. Now all you got to do is click done and boom, it's right there. The finish is amazing. I love these buttons here. That's your heated grips and your central locking. The seating position and ergonomics are so good. Like the handlebars are pulled back towards you. You're sitting nice. This, the seat has a nice support for your tailbone and your butt. And your legs aren't bent weirdly. They're nice. And this is why I like these huge floorboards. You can have your leg here, here, or if you want to stretch it out, you can even move your legs up there. It's all good. Third thing I love is the wind protection. Wind protection down there for your, for your legs. You have those lowers which you can open and close. Then you can move your windshield up and down. Then you have this big fairing on top. This blocks wind on your body, on your hands. And then you have that windshield up which you can move up or down. Just double tap, it goes to its tallest setting. Double tap down, it'll go down to its lowest setting. And the windshield 
is not just a gimmick it's really functional you can see it's cold we still have snow on the roads yeah let's move the windshield up to its highest setting it's a what 47 degree day today uh, it's pretty chilly <laughs> and no uh, once you get the windshield up to its highest setting it really blocks off a lot of wind a lot of wind and this bike man this just comes to its own when it's on the highways like we are right now which brings me to the fourth thing that I love about this bike is the ride when you're riding on the highway whatever speed you're at you're just chilling along the bike feels super planted the wind protection is amazing you can listen to your music big blaring through the four, the 200 watt speakers you have four speakers two in the front two in the back it's like surround sound everywhere the loud sound of the exhaust the chugga chugga of the v-twin it's an experience to behold in itself all you want to do is keep riding and eat up miles after miles after miles the seat is comfy the suspension eats up all these bumps yeah you just don't want to stop uh, you only stop when the gas light comes on basically that's when that's the only time i stop <laughs> Now, this is not just a big bike for your highways. It handles quite well too. So that brings me to point number five, is its handling. Yeah, this is not a sports bike, so it's not gonna lean like a sports bike, but here's the thing though. Given its weight, size, and dimensions, if you push it, it will lean, and it does so quite happily. It doesn't feel imbalanced or anything like that. Uh, it's That's one thing I've found with all of the Indian motorcycles that I've uh, ridden and reviewed over the year, over last year, is that the balance on all of them is simply amazing. It's simply amazing. So yeah, handling is a win for me. Now, so in conclusion, this bike, I've had it for a year, uh, ridden it for more than 10,000 miles, done a bunch of, bunch of adventures, had a lot of fun with it. And in the year that I've had it, I've not had any issues, any major issues with it. I mean, those were small issues. The screen flickered once and the seat bolt flew out once. I mean, that's okay. Uh, the Indian's build quality has been amazing. There have been no quality issues, no build issues, no engine issues, no mechanical issues, none of that. The seating position is awesome. The wind protection is great. Uh, it's got heated seats, heated grips, 36 gallons of storage space so you can go on long distance trips without a problem this bike has been amazing so when i started this video i had this question in my mind was like i've had it for a year i've ridden it for 10,000 miles or so now it is it like one of those things like you have a crush on somebody you move in together and then you find out there's big differences and <laughs> y'all fall apart not with the indian roadmaster nope 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 i've been in love before but it's never been quite like this this is intoxicating exciting fun uh, and at the same time it's so freeing and it's so exhilarating it's it's just awesome maybe that's what true love is hmm Maybe I just found my true love between a man and a machine. <laughs> That's deep. All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. Keep your knees in the breeze. I'll see you soon. Bro out.